Now let's talk about how we can protect ourselves from a DDoS attack. A DDoS attack is a distributed denial of service attack on our infrastructure, and we'll see how this works. So say there's an attacker that's a hacker, and they want to do a DDoS attack against our application server. In this case, they're going to launch multiple master servers, and these servers are going to launch bots, a lot of bots, and all these bots are going to send requests to our application server. Now, our server is not meant to handle this many requests, so it will be overwhelmed and it will not be working anymore. It will be denied service. And therefore, any normal user trying to connect to our application server will see that our server is not accessible or not responsive, effectively making our application down. So a DDoS attack is quite scary when you think about it. But on AWS, you can protect yourself from it. The first way is to use AWS Shield standard, and that's enabled for all customers at no additional cost, and it will protect you against a DDoS attack for your websites and application. If you want a premium DDoS protection, you have to use AWS Shield Advanced, which is going to give you 24 seven, so 24 hours a day, seven days a week protection on DDoS. Then you have WAF, to filter specific requests based on rules. This is the web application firewall. CloudFront and Route 53 that we've already seen to give us protection by using the global edge network. And so when it's combined with Shield, it will provide attack mitigation at the edge locations. And finally, you need to be ready to scale if you're under attack, maybe by leveraging auto-scaling on AWS. So here is what the sample reference architecture looks like for DDoS protection. So we have our users, and they will be routed through the DNS on Route v 3 which is protected by Shield, so your DNS is safe from DDoS attack. Then you should use a CloudFront distribution to make sure your content is cached at the edge, and then it is also protected by Shield, and in case you need to filter and protect from an attack, you can use the web application firewall. Then to serve that application, you can use a load balancer in the public subnet that will scale for you. And finally, behind the load balancer, you should use EC2 instances in an auto-scaling group to be able to scale to the higher demand. So all of this will give you a really good DDoS protection against these type of attacks. Now let's do a deep dive into the services I just mentioned. So Shield is made of two components. We have Shield Standard, which is a free service that is activated for every AWS customer. And this will provide you protection against the common attacks for DDoS. They're called SYN UDP reflection, uh, floods, reflection attacks, and other layer three or layer four attacks. Then you have Shield Advanced, which is an optional service. It costs you about $3,000 per month per organization. And they will give you protection against more sophisticated attacks on your EC2, ELB, CloudFront, Global Accelerator, and Route 53. You also get access to response team when you need it, to help you protect yourself during these DDoS attacks. And in case you are incurring some cost on these attacks, then any fees that is incurred during this attack is on AWS. So Shield, from an exam perspective, remember that the free version is activated by default for every customer. And if you need that response team, if you need to be having a higher level of defense, then Shield Advance is something that you enable yourself and it costs about $3,000 per month. Next, we have the web application firewall, so WAF. And this is to protect your web applications from common web exploits, for example, on layer seven. Layer seven, as you remember, maybe is HTTP, whereas layer four was for TCP. So because it is layer seven, it can be deployed only on HTTP friendly devices. So it can be deployed on your application load balancer, your API gateway, we haven't seen it, it's out of scope of the exam, and CloudFront. On your web application firewall, you can define web ACL, so web access control lists, and these rules on this SEL can include filtering, for example, based on the IP addresses, the headers of HTTP, the body, some strings. It can protect you against common attacks, such as a SQL injection or a cross-site scripting. You can have size constraints to make sure the requests are not too big, and also block certain countries using a geomatch. Finally, for DDoS protection, you can use write-based rules to count the occurrences of events, therefore saying that you know a user cannot do more than five requests per second, and that would help to be protected against a DDoS attack. So that's it. Just at a high level, remember that it is a combination of Shield, WAF, CloudFront, Route 53 that will give you an entire DDoS protection. And again, all these services you need to know them at a high level. So I hope that was helpful, and I will see you in the next lecture.